Welcome back to Globetrotting, over 70% unsubscribed and I'm trying to hit 50,000 this year, so your support would be greatly appreciated. Over the years, there have been several development studies that never got off the ground, also just generally several concepts, some outlandish and some equally crucial to the long-term future of an aircraft manufacturer. In the case of Boeing, as discussed here on the channel, concepts have been massively influential and acted as building blocks for the manufacturer moving forward. Forward. The X-48 is an experimental UAV that you may not have heard of, but if you have, just let me discuss it a little bit further today. UAV, standing for Unnamed Aerial Vehicle, the X-48 was built with the intent of looking at the blended wing body design and trying to better understand whether this had some potential in the long term for an adaptation. The BWB aircraft for short is something we've seen quite extensively when it comes to future concept aircraft. And sometimes, yes, they may look outlandish, but they come from a place when Boeing and other manufacturers wanted to understand the capabilities of of these jets that just little bit better. The X-48 only had a 6.4 meter wingspan and weighed 178 kilos. It wasn't a full-scale aircraft by any means, but a demonstrator, and an experimental plane that was powered by just three tiny engines, allowing it to reach a maximum altitude of 10,000 feet and or 3,000 meters with speeds of 220 kilometers an hour or 120 knots. The X-48 would exist through several iterations, such as an X-48B, and then onwards we saw further development into the X-48C. A first flight took place in 2007 before, like I touched on, those adaptations were made to ensure that flight testing could continue between 2012 and 2013, before the aircraft type as we knew it was retired. For such a small aircraft though, that might pack a bit of a punch, why was this something worth exploring? Well, discussions of a blended wing body design actually date back several decades, before these flight tests with the X-48 even took place. We have to head to the late 1980s and even into the 1990s, when aircraft manufacturers such as McDonnell Douglas and Boeing were attempting to enhance their grip on the market. In the case of McDonnell Douglas before the eventual tie-up, take market share away from Boeing. McDonnell Douglas believed that there could be potential for a blended wing body design for implementation across their commercial aircraft program. They felt it was worth pursuing and looking into. In fact, even after the tie-up in the late 1990s, McDonnell Douglas actually came forward to Boeing with a concept for the BWB. However, there were pretty quickly apparent negatives around such a design. There was also much uncertainty over its performance and just what would be the experience for passengers on board this plane. Remember, a BWB radically differs from the fuselages that we've gotten used to in today's industry. You just need to take a look at the B-roll that I've inserted throughout this video to get an understanding for what the BWB is like. It may seem funny that something so essential yet straightforward would be another roadblock and that's in the form of emergency exits. This was a long-winded focus and a debate over an aircraft type such as this within our industry. If it was to be moved forward with, where would the emergency exits be placed? With a wider fuselage, how would people get out? These are all important things that might seem so basic, but are so important. All of this talk and experimentation led to the eventual X-48 UAV. What benefits, though, does an aircraft like this have over your more traditional types? And would it make it worth a manufacturer studying further and potentially looking to implement it on a more formal scale? Well, firstly, its aerodynamic efficiency reduces drag, resulting in improved fuel efficiency when compared to more of your traditional aircraft configurations. In the era where efficiency is at the forefront, even if we're looking back to the 1990s, we were beginning to see certain shifts in what airlines were requiring. It is easy to see why your aircraft manufacturers and their team were looking to find ways to boost efficiency wherever possible and may have looked towards a BWB as being an actual alternative that would have worked. The integration also between the fuselage and the wings was said to enhance lift and reduce weight, allowing for a either greater payload or a capacity and range extension. 
Additionally, the BWB design provided ample volume for fuel storage, cargo, or passenger accommodations, which really the key word that this gives is versatility. Versatility has been and remains a big focus for your airline customers. Say in some cases, routes providing excellent value for meat exports than maybe the passengers that are actually jumping aboard the surface. But in some cases, a route might be more passenger focused. That is why a BWB had potential. Moreover, you had teams analysing such aircraft that deemed an absence of a conventional tail structure would reduce aerodynamic interference. This would have actually seen enhanced stability. Boeing believed further that a BWB would offer quieter and smoother travel. Now, this was something that was interestingly proven during the flight testing process. The hope being if you could reduce the noise, then customer satisfaction levels would increase. And even for people on the ground living around airports, the noise wouldn't be as severe. But you would have to move past, first of all, the odd fuselage layout to begin with, which, as touched on, was more complex and something pretty publicly that was discussed at being a little bit far from ideal. After many test flights, studies, and so much more, NASA and Boeing published a piece saying all good things must come to an end. This aired in April 2013. The article highlighted the accomplishment of establishing a ground-to-flight database, which proved the concept's low-speed controllability. Additionally, like I said, it was clear that the plane would be quiet and efficient just from what they'd done, with the hybrid wing meaning that NASA's environmental requirements for future aircraft were met. Overall, while promising, similar to many studies, there were very much apparent complexities that I have touched on. Take a look at its wingspan though for something else, and the overall locations for say loading bags, fuel, and more. Introducing such a plane would see significant adjustments required at airports from not just the facilities, but actually think about the overall ground crew measures in terms of loading your bags on. You can't rule something like this out in the future, especially as I feel like we've reached a point in our industry where manufacturers are really looking to see what the next defining aircraft will be. But the belief was at least for now or even back then that sticking with something more familiar and therefore really a proven design would be the more ideal decision, while still working on such studies in the background when plotting what could be next, say in the 2030s or 2040s. Even if we have not seen formally the BWB in the commercial sector and past being a demonstrator, its studies and results can be deemed still important for Boeing and NASA in understanding what directions to take looking ahead. And that's the thing. Concepts, they're hilarious. Studies can be quite funny. I mean, a three engine 747. But all of these concepts are important in helping these manufacturers understand what is the best decision. Sometimes you've got to throw darts at a dartboard and only some of them will land. But those shots beforehand are going to be incredibly important. That's going to conclude today's aviation analysis. If you've got any thoughts on the BWB, you can let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your take. Please do take care. Do also be safe. I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis. And flight, and we'll fly.